There are many legends of horror that come from old European folk tales and stories told as cautionary tales. Werewolves, witches, evil dwarves, will of the wisps, and of course, the vampire. It's just a scratch. Tonight on Past Access DYK Dark, we introduce to you the spirited legends and partial truth of the vampire madness in the Czech lands. Tonight, we present Vampires in Czechia. The modern-day Czech Republic is a patchwork quilt of Central European regions and peoples with influences from Slovakia, Germany, Poland, Austria, and Hungary. Slavic folk tales that have stood the test of time permeate the histories of these peoples. The vampire has a long and storied past here, even before the more popular literary work of Bram Stoker's Dracula in 1897. Stoker's story is pulled from historic references from the 13th century Wallachian prince Vlad III of the line Dracul, the Romanian translation of Dragon. Books, movies, and graphic novels of Dracula have painted a picture of the vampire from a very specific perspective. For hundreds and hundreds of years, the vampire legend was told as fact among the peasantry and as well within noble houses alike. To many, Vampires were a real threat, so much a threat that precautions would have to take place when burying the recently deceased as not to see the reanimated corpse come back to life and attack the living. During this time in the 18th century, there was a frenzy of vampire sightings in southeastern Europe and Transylvania. So how did vampire madness consume the central European region of Bohemia? Vampire fever had its fits and seizures through the ages in Central Europe, but our story actually starts with an unlikely 20th century discovery of a mass grave in a little town outside of Prague called Chelikovitsa. Here in Chelikovitsa in Czech Republic, just about 30 minutes outside of Prague, and this town is very unique in the sense that you can't really see any kind of demons or spiritually dark things as you go through this beautiful little town. You see these picturesque little ch uh, churches and, and uh, chapels and, and city streets like you would see anywhere uh, in, in Western Europe. However, there was a dark secret here for, for many centuries. And it all started to be discovered in 1966 when a man that's not about a, a mile away from here was trying to dig up to, to create a new home for himself and he found a whole collection of skeletons and when asked about the skeletons and further research they realized that they were hundreds and hundreds of years old so in come the archaeologists and stopped the building process for this man's house sad news for him great news for historians because this was a very interesting burial site in the middle of the Czech Republic, not too far outside of Prague, there is an idyllic Bohemian town called Čelikovitsa. This ancient township has a long history along the Elbe River, first mentioned in 1290. The hard-to-miss town hall, busy shops, and a picturesque river walk isn't much different from many other Czech towns, but this one holds a centuries-old secret. This dark history was first discovered in 1966 when 14 skeletons and 11 graves were unearthed during a home construction process with the initial discovery of finding three individuals combined in several burial pits. What makes banners a bit more suspect was the manner in which the skeletal remains were found. You see, many of these skeletons showed signs that their hands had been bound together and their skulls separated from their body at a distance not natural to average decay. Originally thought to be the bodies from the 13th to 15th centuries, the idea of anti-vampire grave desecration began to take hold. If true, this would be a much earlier example of vampire fear compared to the vampire concerns of the mid-18th century. Proof of this historic vampire fear came in 2010 in the form of an archaeological discovery of additional human remains nearby these Chelikovitsa grave pits. As time went on, the age of the skeletons were measured with up-to-date C radiocarbon method and in 2016, the remains were more accurately marked as human skeletons from the early 14th century. 
Photographic evidence of the archaeological digs are presented in the town's Museum of History, along with explanations of the historic records of vampire fears in this area. We'll step aside for a moment, but when we return, DYK dives into the Slavic folklore of the vampire. Next time on Past Access, our next adventure highlights the capital of Tuscany, known as Florence, the birthplace of the Renaissance. Once the epicenter of medieval European trade, finance, and artistic expression, Florence provided an unrivaled influence across the continent and gave birth to the era known as the Renaissance. This 14th century awakening from the late Dark Ages moved art, technology, and humanist expression to all new heights. We make a wish at the El Porcelino, check out the amazing artistic collection at the Uffizi Museum, push across the ever-crowded Ponte Vecchio, and marvel at the majesty of the Duomo. We will introduce you to the Florentine greatness of Galileo, Michelangelo, Dante, Da Vinci, Brunelleschi, and of course, the Medici family. All this and more on Past Access presents Florence, the Cradle of the Renaissance. Some Slavic cultures viewed the vampire as being in a state of metamorphosis, passing through several distinct stages in its vampiric development. The first 40 days were considered decisive for the making of a vampire. It started out as an invisible shadow and then gradually gained strength from drinking human blood and forming a human-like form, then retreating back to the grave. Once ready to fully leave the grave, the vampire would blend in with other humans and thus carry out his double life of either fathering children or turning others into vampires outright. In Czechia, or what was once called Bohemia, locals called these vampires Pijavica, which translates into the word leech. These vampires were created through the unholy and evil activities performed in life and thus in death were cursed to roam the night as bloodthirsty predators. According to Slavic tradition, vampire hunting took the form in a variety of rituals. These superstitions became even more prevalent in the 17th and 18th centuries as town folk proactively sought out graves in order to eliminate the vampire threat. When we think of vampire hunters, one might think of the famously fictitious Van Helsing or his kit of vampire-killing potions, wooden stakes, or a holy water-drenched crucifix, but the reality was a little bit more pedestrian. Farmers would ward off vampires by plowing ditches around their property with twin oxen or three elderly women would visit a recent grave of a suspected vampire and embed five old knives over the corpse's chest area and the other four over the four limbs. If you wanted to kick it up a notch, one might exhume the body and burn the corpse, decapitate the head and turn it towards hell, wrap the arms and feet with iron chains, or even place a brick in the dead man's mouth before covering the grave once more. As you can imagine, once these communities became invested in these superstitions, no dead body was truly safe. This would concern the church as well as the regional leaders, requesting laws and anti-corpse desecration mandates from the seat of the Habsburg rule. The vampire panic reached an all-time high throughout the Habsburg lands. So in 1755, Empress Maria Theresa asked her court physician Gerhard von Swieten to once and for all put the vampire question to rest by scientific reasoning. He conducted interviews between the peasants and clergy, only to find out that both parties had fueled each other's superstitious beliefs in the undead coming back to life and tormenting the living. Svitin returned to court in Vienna and presented his treatise of his findings. The outcome would use science as a way to combat the occult superstition, but the empress would take it a step further. Her Highness issued a royal decree on March 1, 1755, that she condemned the vampire panic as a result of fraud and gullibility. She made it illegal to dig up corpses and maim or burn the bodies with threat of imprisonment. Thus the grave desecration stopped, but the legend of the vampire would still live on in hushed tones and oral traditions. These archaeological discoveries of human remains would later undergo facial reconstruction with the latest 3D forensic methods to bring the dead to life, in a manner of speaking. Cicero André de Costa Moraes, a Brazilian forensic facial reconstruction expert, was assigned the task to take a specific skull from one of these graves in Chalicovitza 
and reconstruct a form of what we think this man would have looked like back in the 14th century. As we look into this plausible image of this man, we must guess as to the reason why he was buried in this pit far from holy ground, and in the manner he was deposited in the ground, as well as the possible desecration he received. Was he a criminal, a murderer, an unlucky individual accused of heresy by the townsfolk of Chelikovitsa? Was he suffering from TB, whereas others would have misinterpreted his coughing up of blood as being akin to vampirism? Well, in all, this vampire conjecture has its faults. One has to take into account that the idea of separating the head and tying of the hands of bodies were anti-vampiric methods from the 1700s and not the 1300s. If we are to believe these bodies were from the 14th century, they did not match the anti-vampire desecrations of burning or a stake through the chest, as found in some written records. Nonetheless, these human remains in Chelikovitsa continue to be a mystery that is either a result of the 14th century non-sanctioned capital punishment or an outcome of superstitious post-mortem activities to keep the dead dead and the living safe from the fear of vampires. So now you know the story of vampires in Czechia. We hope you've enjoyed tonight's DYK Dark episode, somewhat appropriate for the darkened days of autumn here in Central Europe, where the distinction between fact and legend can become a bit blurred. If you would like more stories about the occult on Past Access DYK, please reach out to us in the message section, like, and subscribe to catch all of our great Did You Know shows, like the history of Halloween and the haunted Huska Castle's gateway to hell. So until next time for Past Access DYK, I'm Pete Coleman from Prague. Good night. This has been Past Access Did You Know with Pete Coleman. For more information on this topic or other DYK shows, please visit us at pastaccess.com. Be sure to visit our Past Access YouTube channel, like and subscribe.